Hi everyone, welcome. So, I have a question of the day. Anyone else sitting around in like either pajamas, like your day pajamas, um, some joggers or sweats, or exercise attire? Like, anyone else doing that? <laughs> Is it just me every day? Um, that's pretty much what I do. Like, we are halfway through the day, so I change my clothes because I'm gonna run at five. Um, if you haven't seen How I'm Coping, that video with COVID and with quarantine, then definitely check that out. But um, it's just been like the mixture of attire I'm wearing. I feel like this weekend I need to just like put on real clothes, just to put on real clothes, like leaving my house clothes. Anyways, so how did I get today's topic? Well, recently I've seen a lot of women who are struggling with their hair because they're confronted with it for the first time. And so they're at the point where they've got to take out whatever install they had or they're really just for the first time having to really deal with their hair because they can't go to their hairstylist, they don't have access. And so I was like, what could I do to help these people whose biggest issue is detangling? And so I thought I'd just share with you all my biggest detangling mistakes in hopes that it helps you. I have other videos where I share how to properly detangle the hair, so I'll link them above and below. But I think it's important to know what I've done wrong as well on the road to getting towards the things that make my detangling easy, right? I never spend more than 20 minutes detangling my hair. Nine times out of 10, it's less than 10 minutes as well. Um, it just depends on the day and what I'm doing. If I'm on live with you all, it's gonna take longer than if I'm just, you know, doing it in the shower. And the reasons are learning these particular lessons, learning this about my hair. So first, and I think one of the most important things is I used to utterly resist sectioning my hair. And I still don't section my hair to the hilt, but I used to only finger detangle, so I was like, I don't need to section my hair. And then I would only use a white tooth comb. And so maybe I did two very large sections, one on each side. But after a while, I realized I was actually making my detangling longer because it was harder to get to the roots and so I would spend more time going over the same sections to try to get the roots untangled uh, and so I was just causing a mess whereas if I had just put my hair in maybe four sections eight sections it would go by faster and it was just me being stubborn but once I realized I was making it take longer I started to do less sections also, I realized I was breaking my hair. So if you are detangling your hair and another hair gets caught up in what you're detangling, there's a good chance you're gonna break off that other hair, right? And especially if it's like in another section and it's being pulled into the section that you're detangling. So make sure you cleanly section your hair so you're not breaking it off and you're not causing your detangling session to take longer. I resisted it for so long, but if you're not gonna section your hair at any other time, I think detangling is a step that you really should break down your hair to at least four sections, if not more, depending on the density of your hair. And then speaking of um, not being able to get the roots, skipping the roots, I would think I was getting the roots because I was doing my hair in such large sections. It wasn't until I started to do smaller sections that I realized that I wasn't really detangling the roots of my hair. And so sometimes they would get matted. Um, and that's like one of the things that frustrates us really tight coiled ladies is matting. Um, but it wasn't until I realized that I really wasn't fully detangling my roots and getting the shed hairs out that the matting stopped. And also I ended up getting less knots because I was getting the shed hair out of those roots. So it wasn't tangling up on any splits, right? Um, it wasn't tangling up on any hair. And so once I figured out that I really needed to get to the root, then my detangling sessions became easier and took less time. Why? Because when it came to wash day, I wasn't starting on hair that was already in a bad shape and I was just adding to the issue. Instead, I, it took me like a good, I don't know, 45 minutes one day to make sure I was getting through all of my hair, um, make sure I was getting the roots. I'll link my video of a thorough detangling routine. Um, make sure I was getting the roots. After that, I never had to do it again because I was sectioning my hair and making sure I was getting to the roots every single time. But after that one time of really sitting down and really paying attention to my roots, then everything got better, but I had to take that time to get my roots. 
and I learned that hard lesson. You can't skip the roots. You think you can, you want to, but in the end it will bite you down the road. And then speaking of shed hair, not getting the shed hair out. Um, I was using a, a wide tooth comb only to detangle my hair at one point um, and my fingers I figured out was doing a better job of getting the shed hair out than that wide tooth comb. The wide tooth comb was getting my tangles out but I needed a comb with closer together um, tongs is what I keep calling them, that's not what they are, but closer together sections in order to get all that shed hair out. And then again, that cuts down on knots, which cuts down on your detangling time. And so really getting the shed hair out was integral. Now I get the shed hair out before I even wet my hair to take away some of the tangling that will occur from the shed hair being in there once you wet your hair um, with the shower stream, I should say. Shed hair can be the biggest culprit and making your wash days take significantly longer, especially if you have split ends. So it is really important to get that shed hair out to prevent fairy knots, to prevent the hair from sticking together. It all comes from the shed hair just being stuck in there. And if you have split ends, it just compounds the problem. If you have matted roots, it compounds the problem and makes your detangling sessions take hours so make sure you're getting the shed hair out it doesn't have to take a long time if you haven't done it before then it's going to take you a long time it will but if you do it regularly it won't take nearly as much time every single week you shed 80 to 100 hairs a day and so if you're not getting that out you're just going to have problems and then another really really important one um, that i still see a lot of people make this mistake is not softening the hair you need to soften the hair whether you are applying a deep conditioner whether you're just um, applying water for some people that's enough you need to soften the hair to prevent breakage if you detangle hair that is dry or is not hydrated not moisturized it will break so your detangling sessions are just completely making sure that your hair remains unhealthy right it is breaking the hair off at a bad point so your ends are going to split and you're going to end up with mid chest splits or you're gonna break your hair off and end up with uneven hair that is not, you think it's not growing, but it's growing. You're just not retaining the length. You keep breaking it off. Soft hair is pliable. Soft hair can be styled. Soft hair can be detangled. Soft hair is workable, whereas hair that is dry and even just like not desert dry, just not softened, hair is harder to detangle. It, it takes longer to detangle. So soften the hair and you will have shorter, easier detangling sessions. And then coupled with softening the hair, you need slip. That is the number one thing. Any naturalista who's been in the game for a bit will tell you, you need slip. A lot of the times people are just detangling with water and oil. And if your hair already has slippy product in it, that can work just fine. If it doesn't, then though you may detangle the hair, it's not gonna be as fast as it could be as if you just added slip. Um, I used to think, okay, detangle the hair with deep conditioner. Not taking into account that the deep conditioner really didn't need to have slip. So until sometimes I would use a deep conditioner, my hair would be you know, hydrated, but the deep conditioner didn't have any slip. And so I was really working against my hair causing more friction, which meant I was causing more roughening and more tangles. Whereas if I had slip, like lubrication on my strands, the tangles will melt out faster and easier, especially if you're using brushes and things. And it speeds up the detangling time so much with slip. So slip is like numero uno, rule number one for detangling natural hair. It's not about like using more or less product. It's about speeding up the time it takes to detangle your hair. Slip is huge in that, absolutely huge. With good slip, my detangling sessions are so quick. A, my fingers glide through my hair. A brush will glide through my hair. A comb will glide through my hair. Without slip, I'm going to be picking and picking and I will get it detangled, but it's gonna take more time, probably twice as much time than if I just had slip. Those were my biggest detangling faux pas along the way to discovering how to detangle my hair in such a quick amount of time. So in the comments below, let me know your biggest detangling mistakes. 
help others out, they need you. <laughs> and in the description box, I will leave links to my detangling videos as well as my detangling brush reviews because they might prove helpful as well. And until next time, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and the blog. Be sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and make sure you find a little joy in every day. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. That was sticking out the whole time. That's okay, though. This is not like... This is just my hair up. Video coming. This is cute, though. I used to wear my hair like this when I wanted to stretch my twists as they were drying. I would, like, go, like, leave, do this to leave the house, and it's just, like, a really cute up, too. <sighs> the days. I should do that again. This is really cute. I've been wearing my hair like this for Zoom meetings. Anyways, there's a video on this coming, so stay tuned. <laughs>